Christoph, I did my doctorate in neurophysiology, I guess it's been 45 years ago now is when I started, so a long time. Um, and during this time, I followed the field pretty closely. And the model that you and Giulio Tononi have been developing is, to my mind, one of the most radically interesting uh, new approaches that I've heard. But help me understand it. The, the Giulio Tononi theory of integrated information explains how consciousness, how experience arises out of matter. So on the one hand, you have the, the, you have the physics of the brain, but in addition, you have experiences. You have pain and pleasure, and, and traditionally, it's been very difficult to link those two. Now, what, what the theory says is that it makes two fundamental axiomatic assumptions it, it, that are sort of widely shared among philosophers who think about consciousness, that for once, any conscious experience is hugely differentiated. You can have a vast number of different conscious experiences. Just think of all the frames of all the movies you've ever seen or, or movies that will ever be made until the end of time. Each one is a unique visual experience, and you can couple that with auditory experience, with pain experience, etc. It's every frame. It's not every movie. It's every frame. Correct. Every different. frame, I see something, and I see something right, slightly right, different. Right. 30 a second or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Um, now, and, and then, of course, you have all the other experiences you can have, you know, pain experience and pleasure and, and, and sound, etc. So it's a gigantic number of different, mm -hmm. of, uh, of, uh, different numbers of, co of possible conscious experiences. At the same time, each experience is integrated, what, 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 what philosophers refer to as unitary. In a sense, what, what I right now have a conscious experience of you, I cannot not see you in, black, in, in color. I can't see you in black and white. I cannot not see, apprehend only half of the visual field. I mean, I can do this, but that's, of course, different. If I I, whatever I'm conscious of, I am conscious of as a whole. I, pre I, I, I apprehend as a whole. And then the idea is you take those axioms seriously and you cast them in, into an in information theoretical idiom. Why information theory? Information theory because it treats, it, do, it, it doesn't care about whether we're talking about neurons that fire action potential or synapses that release neurotransmitter or transistors that switch. All it says, there's different states and the different states have some causal relationship to each other, just like in a neural network. But it doesn't depend on that. It could be, because we don't think consciousness, we, we, we don't think the stuff the brain is made out of is really what's what critical about consciousness. It's the interrelationship of the stuff that's, that's, that's critical. Then you take the theory and cast it into mathematical form, into this information theoretical form, and then you, you, you get something very concrete. You get this integrated information theory that tells you, for any network, I can compute how differentiated and how integrated it is. And I can assign a number to that. It's called phi. And it's, it's, it's a we have two separate things, though. You have a, a, the size of the network and the number of interconnections and, 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 the, and the integration of it, right? Correct. Yeah. So and how do you get one number out of the two? Of well, well. So, 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 so you have to derive them in a in a in a calculus that sort of takes both into account. You want okay. something that's highly differentiated, but you also want it integrated. And of course, there's a trade-off. You can have something that's highly differentiated, like a huge disk. A disk of 16 gigabyte or 100 gigabyte capacity has exactly 100 million gigabyte different states. You know, that's a very large number of differentiated states. But then they are not at all integrated. It doesn't know this computer. You know, when you store the disk, when you store, let's say, images on this disk, it doesn't know that these are images. It doesn't know that those images might relate. They might all be part of a movie. They might be pictures of my daughter, or they might be pictures of random people, right. or they might be my tax return, right? The, none of that in, um, information per se is, is, um, is just in the disk. You have to enhance that with adding, with adding this integrated information. Okay. So you can, you, can, you can formulate a single um, calculus that includes that. And now, in principle, I can go around. I can look at any network that has interconnected parts. And I can try to, given that I know something about the states and given that I know the, the, the connectivity graph, in principle, I can now compute is it differentiated and how differentiated it is for each one particular state. So I have the network, those neurons are firing, those neurons are quiet, and I can compute um, the, the state of this system, and I can, the theory gives me now in a two to the n dimensional um, state space where n is the number of different neurons. Uh, under the simplifying assumption, neurons are either on or off. Mm -hmm. So I get two to the mm -hmm. n. To, to, so now I'm operating this two to the n dimensional state space. So if I have a thousand neurons, which is a tiny network, I have two to the thousands, that's, you know, 10 to the 333 is an amazingly complex, I mean, it may as well be infinity, the number is so large. Mm -hmm. And, and what the theory says, there's this geometric construct in this space that's unique to this one experience and to this, one inter to this particular network. If the network goes into a different state, you have a different geometric construct. And the theory asserts that this is what consciousness is. My conscious sensation, my experience of pain or pleasure, or being in love or being a man, is 
a configuration in this very high dimensional space of integrated information. So every 30th of a second or 50th of a second, thousandth of a second, what are you going to say? I have this multi-dimensional space, which is almost infinite in terms of its dimensions, each one of which would be different, which describes describes or is that experience? Which is that experience. Think of it like a crystal, or think of it like a flame in this very high dimensional space. So each each brain has at any given point that it's awake and not an anesthesia or in deep sleep or dead, yeah. it has this thing associated with it. And it flickers because, it, as you point out, every time my conscious experience think, I think of pain, I think about the tax return, I think it constantly switches and, and changes right. around. And they're all different, obviously. And they're all different. They're all of different quality. You know, my 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 conscious well, my the experience feeling, of, the quality, the, the what it feels like to. Yes, so which, for color is different, for sound is different, for for pain, and and that's uh, ultimately is going to be reflected in the geometry of these um, of these different crystals. Now, now we know in the physical world when you have these theories, you have a, a transmitting particles that are exchanged. We're looking for the Higgs, Higgs boson, the, the, the photon goes between particles. Is this crystal, is this multi-dimensional space a, 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 a thing? It's the most, it is the ultimate reality. It is the quiddity of conscious experience. It is a light inside your head. It is a voice inside your head. It is conscious experience, yes. It is fundamental to anything else. A, 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 does it have an independent existence? Is it a substance? It is not a substance. It, it's tightly linked to this network. If the network disappears, let's say, because you get a strong blow to the head, right. then the state will disappear and this will all be gone. Right. So, but, but it is not the same as the network. It is different. It is the only it, way you experience the world. The it, yes, it is emergent in a very specific, it has a lawful relationship to this network. The fact that it's emergent from the network, how does, it dif how does that differentiate it from people who say that consciousness is just an emergent property of the brain? Well, I mean, they mean something different. So what they mean by there, you take a small brain and has no consciousness, and you take a middling brain, and it may have none, and then suddenly you reach a threshold, and you get a big brain like, like, like a human brain, you get consciousness, right? This is different. This says that any network that has, that has a phi different from zero, that has some integrated information, will have some conscious states. They may be very little if it's a small network, or they may be which is tremendous if it's, our, if it's our hypertrophied brain, but, but, Every network will have some conscious experience, even a very small one. A very small one have little integrated information, but there will be a crystal, there will be a flame, there will be some conscious sensation associated with this little network. So does that move in the direction of panpsychism, where everything that exists has some proto-consciousness? You can think of panpsychism as an early conceptual precursor of this much more quantitative theory. It's a quantitative theory, yes, and it says in principle any system that has sufficient co uh, complexity will have conscious sensation associated with it. And that's just the way the universe is. We find ourselves in a universe where complexity of this particular type is consciousness. 